Here is a selection of my 386 CPUs. The success of the x86 architecture is anything but boring. It all started when IBM decided to enter the personal computer market and selecting Intel and the proven 8088 as the main CPU for their systems. To make sure demand was met, IBM required Intel to have a second source of chips. And most of you will know the history, AMD was chosen and entered a technology exchange agreement in 1982. I think today's topic is very interesting and that is why I'm happy that boot.dev is supporting today's video. More about boot.dev later. It could have been a partnership second to none. Unfortunately, Intel got greedy. They wanted to dominate the x86 market. Intel stopped sharing details of their 386 chips in 1985 because Intel argued that new chip generations aren't covered by the agreement that was signed in 1982. So if Intel didn't share the technology, how did AMD end up with 386 CPUs? Well, they reverse engineered it. AMD still relied on the technology exchange agreement from 1982. And in order to not violate any copyright, AMD employed a technique called clean room design. What it means is that a group of engineers physically and logically analyzed Intel chips and observed their external behavior. What does the chip do when we give it certain instructions? Based on this information, a detailed specification was created and given to another team that had no knowledge of the original chip's internal design. The task was then to re-implement the logic and create a new chip from the ground up. So this way, AMD avoided copyright infringement by just copying Intel's design. The clean room design was also applied for 486 chips because guess what? Intel also didn't share any specifications with AMD for that chip. And again, AMD was late to the party. The 386 was released by Intel in 1985 and AMD released theirs in 1991. The 486 was introduced by Intel in 1989 and AMD? Well, their version came out in 1993, four years later after painfully reverse engineering Intel's design. Even though AMD could fabricate better and faster chips for that generation, they were just too late to the market. AMD couldn't continue like this. In the same year when AMD released their 486 CPUs, Intel released the Pentium, 60 and 66 megahertz. And AMD? Well, they started their own project to catch up with Intel. The AMD SSA5, the 5K86P75. So again, we have a P75 rating, but this is not a 486. First of all, you see from the dimensions, it is bigger than the 5X86. And if you turn it around, we see that this one looks more like a socket 7 CPU. So what is this? This is AMD's first CPU that they designed completely in-house. It is a K5, but maybe the marketing department didn't get their hands on it in time because, well, just a few months later, this chip was re-released under the K5 branding. So the question is, were these chips any good? They have a P75 rating exactly like the 486, but we will see later how this chip compares to a Pentium 75. And I got a very nice one here. It's the gold cap Pentium 75. These ones look really, really cool. And this AMD chip is supposed to be as fast as the Intel chip. When we post our BIOS reports a K5 at 75 megahertz, and this is true. The board is jumpered to run at 50 MHz front side bus and a multiplier of 1.5. As far as I know, these chips support exactly the same features as an Intel Pentium. However, the internals are working very differently. And this we'll discuss a little bit later once we see some benchmark numbers. Let's first poke some registers of that CPU. Of course, you can use some of the better known system utilities, but I thought it might be fun to write my own little tool that does something similar. And yes, I decided to go with C++ and all the code that you will see is written by AI. So no, I didn't write any code, but yeah, here it is. What the hell is that? Of course, you need a development environment for this to compile the code and generate your executable. And to do this, I thought Borland Turbo C++ 3.0 for DOS is the perfect match. Now you can let me know in the comments if you have used this development environment during any part of your life. I'm not sure about you, but I'm getting anxious when I see overwhelming development environments and specifically assembly code. This is very intimidating. 
And the worst part is when you try to accomplish a very simple task and nothing seems to work because of dependencies and syntax errors and because of libraries and so on. Why why would life be so hard? Have you ever wondered what it would be like if learning to code wasn't so unnecessarily complicated? The team over at boot.dev redefined the path to becoming a backend developer. They turned learning into a role-playing game-like experience. Collect potions, level up, find treasures and fight bosses. Nobody does it like that anymore, because we all know bored learners quit. Join a new and exciting way to learn, understand and apply your skills, all from the comfort of your browser. And if you ever get stuck, ask Boots, your personal AI tutor, for help. Pick from courses in Python, TypeScript, SQL and JavaScript. And of course, there is so much more to discover, just like in any great RPG game. Enough with the complicated development setups if you just want to start. If you want to learn coding or refresh your skills, go to boot.dev and start right away. Use my promo code bits and bolts or scan the QR code on screen to get 25% off your first year on the annual plan. Learning how to code has never been easier, thanks to boot.dev. So why did I decide to write my own little program to poke the registers of the CPU? Well, I always wanted to compile something under DOS, and this was the perfect opportunity. When I start this application, it lists the feature the CPU supports. For instance, does it have a built-in FPU? And our AMD 5K86 does have a floating point unit. But I want to bring your attention to the last supported feature on this list, the APIC, Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controller. This is not supported by the CPU, and this is because AMD's clone CPU does have some bugs. On the second page of the program output, we get a bit more information what the issue is. And this AMD chip is reporting a different feature on bit 9. Instead of APIC, it does report support for PGE. And this you can also see when you're looking at the output of hardware info. It mentions PGE for AMD CPUs. So yeah, this is a flaw of the CPU, but that's not the only flaw as we'll learn later. If on the other hand, we have a look at the Intel output, we get exactly the same output except for the APIC. This is not reported wrongly here. And also here on the second page, we do not get the issue reported that we have seen for the K5 CPU. So how was my experience with this AMD 5K86? Well, everything I tried seems to be working fine. I could boot into Windows 95, even on the DOS, everything seems to be working as it should. And for what it's worth, the core of this microprocessor is more advanced than that of the Intel Pentium. SSA5 means Super Scalar Architecture of the fifth generation of x86 chips. A Super Scalar Architecture allows to execute multiple instructions simultaneously. And this is what the Intel Pentium could do. It had two integer pipelines and could in theory execute two integer operations at the same time. AMD designed the 5K86 to be a RISC-like x86 implementation. Basically, it took the x86 instructions and decoded it in RISC-like instructions. This allowed the chip to execute out of order, which the Pentium did not allow, and thus parallelize instructions wherever possible. We also have a larger instruction cache. Instead of 8 kilobytes on the Pentium, we have 16, but the data cache remains at 8 kilobytes, exactly like on the Intel Pentium. One major flaw of early SSA5 or 5K86 CPUs is that it had issues with a branch predictor. And AMD even disabled those branch predictors in early steppings, from the P75 that I have here up to P100. Later steppings solved this issue. So if you have a K5 branded CPU, you should not have these issues. And also the clock speeds should be higher. So in essence, the AMD SSA5 or 5K86 is architecturally much closer to the Pentium Pro than the classic Pentium. Unfortunately, with branch prediction disabled and lower clock frequencies, AMD couldn't compete with Intel's faster offerings. And this is another issue. The AMD chip was released in 1996. And at that time, Intel already had the Pentium 166 on the market. So AMD released a 75 megahertz version while Intel was cruising almost at 200 megahertz. So then I think let's just jump directly into benchmarks and we will start with 3D Bench. Here we can see that the AMD is unfortunately slower than a Intel Pentium 75, 
by around 12 frames per second. And the flagship, the Intel Pentium 166, is twice as fast as the AMD chip. So yeah, this is not a good start for the 5K86. But let's continue. PC player favors the AMD chip compared to the Pentium 75. But still, the Pentium 166 is so far ahead that the newly released AMD chip is no threat to Intel at all. Let's move on to Doom. Doom is favoring the AMD chip. Nevertheless, the Pentium 166 is outclassing both other CPUs. Now it gets interesting. Here is Quake. And the AMD chip is losing out quite a bit compared to the Pentium 75. And this is because of the weak floating point unit. AMD didn't have good FPU performance in the early chips. And this is even true for the K6 line. So the AMD 5K86 with 16 frames is behind the Intel Pentium with almost 22 frames. Well, on the Pentium 166 with 40 frames, it's just running through the benchmarks compared to the other two CPUs. Let's move on to speeds and have a look at the score, but also have a look at the cache graphs. The AMD 5K86 is a lot faster than the Pentium at the same frequency. The raw clock speed advantage of the Pentium 166 is definitely helping, but the winner of performance per clock is definitely AMD in this test. Now let's quickly have a look at the cache graphs and here we can see that both CPUs do have 8 kilobytes of data cache, but the AMD is a lot less stable. So what that means is that the AMD chip can't utilize the level 1 cache as efficiently as the Pentium. Let's move on to Topbench. And this test shows that the AMD and the Intel Pentium are identical at the same clock speed. The Pentium 166 is a lot faster, but it does not double in speed, which one might expect. I have three more benchmark slides, CPU-Z, integer score. We can see again that in this one, AMD and Intel are almost identical. The AMD chip is a little bit faster, but the Intel Pentium 166 is over twice as fast as the other two CPUs. And this is what one would expect. Let's move on to the floating point score. And here we can see, oh, that doesn't look good for the AMD chip, does it? The Pentium 75 is twice as fast as our AMD chip at the same frequency. And I think this is really a good test to measure the performance of a floating point unit. It just gives you a very visual representation how good or bad a floating point unit is. This is very comparable to what we have seen in Quake. So yeah, unfortunately, the AMD chips have a weak floating point unit. And finally, processor mark. This is a math calculation, mostly relying on integer calculation as it looks like, because our AMD chip is performing a lot better than the Intel Pentium 75. So these are all the scores I collected. Unfortunately, the AMD 5K86 suffers from a weak floating point unit. And this is also true for AMD's K5 and K6 lineup. On the other hand, the AMD chip is far more technologically advanced than the Intel counterparts. If AMD would have been able to increase the clock speeds, Intel would have had quite the competition. Risk like internal architecture and out of order execution made this a really compelling candidate to compete with Intel. But yeah, as I said before, AMD was late to the party again. The AMD 5K86 was released in 1996 when Intel already was at a clock speed of 166 MHz. And that is why the AMD chip could only be considered as a low cost alternative. Nevertheless, AMD for sure gained all the experience that they needed to release their own CPUs in the future. And we can see this from the K6, the K6 II, the K6 III lineup, and later Athlon CPUs. And this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you knew the 5K86 existed and if you have seen one before. Also, let me know if you're interested in seeing a comparison between a 5X86 basically a chip for socket 3, and this one. Both have a P75 rating, so generation 4 versus generation 5 from AMD. Now I want to thank boot.dev one more time for sponsoring this video and all of you for watching. And of course, also a big thanks to all my Patreons who are supporting this channel. If you want to become a channel supporter, please head over to Patreon and pick one of the membership tiers. Thank you so much for your time, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.